Uh, hello everyone, uh, my name is Vladimir and today I'm presenting the paper called Solving SICP. Today's presentation will be structured roughly the following way. Uh, initially I will introduce the tasks and why I consider it important to be solved and I'll briefly introduce the tools that I use uh, for the solution process. Next I will tell a bit of more details on how the execution of the problem set was conducted and which uh, data was measured in the process. In the third part, I will introduce the data itself and will show the examples of the collected data and I'll present the analysis uh, done with the help of the Emacs Lisp. At the end, I will uh, give some conclusions uh, that I made after solving this uh, project and I will give a few further directions where the research uh, can be aimed at uh, to continue the work. So what is SICP? SICP is one of the world's most famous uh, textbooks on uh, programming in general and it's probably even more famous for the problem set that comes with it rather than the text for the book itself. Uh, it comes from the MIT culture and the problem set that comes with the book consists of 353 problems and there is no official solution to this problem set, at least available online. And Although there are numerous attempts to solve the problem set completely, I have only found two attempts that can be classified as fairly successful, and even those two attempts are heavily using the features provided by the scheme interpreters uh, themselves rather than the scheme standard in general. So uh, I found this as a drawback and I wanted to make a work that proves that uh, SICP problem set can be solved portably in just using the features of the scheme standard. Moreover, I was interested in how much time it takes to become a good programmer to pass a difficult course uh, from the beginning to the end, as I had a suspicion that uh, the assessment, the estimate of the difficulty of a course that uh, universities are giving are usually not very precise. Uh, I hope this report can be useful to uh, at least two groups of people, to the teaching providers who can see this report as a feedback on their work and can be asking their students to write reports or feedbacks on their courses in a similar way. Uh, and the second group would be the listeners, the students, the attendees of the course. And I try to make it useful both for the um, full-time students of the universities and the self-learners who would be try maybe I hope they would draw some inspiration on how the independent learning process can be organized. Um, so I started the project with thinking what would be a perfect course load solution artifact. By saying an artifact, I mean that um, when a student is solving coursework, and I am firm believer in learning by doing uh, learning methodology, um, Usually after the teacher signs off the work as passed, the code is thrown away and never reused. I find this uh, a disadvantageous. I think that every time, every work we're doing should be uh, reused at a later time as much as possible. So at least the work done in the university time could be reused as sort of can, no can knowledge that can be uh, referred to at a later date to remind the student himself on what the work was about. Um, moreover, the uh, artifact should be usable on as many machines as possible because the uh, examiner's machine is certainly not the, the same one that the student is solving the problem set. So portability would add to reusability of the code and the ease of verification. So I ended up doing this in org mode on Emacs. So uh, ideally, in my opinion, the coursework should be done in the notebook format that was popularized by the Jupyter Notebook uh, data analysis system. But by no means, Jupyter is not the only uh, notebook format available. In particular, uh, Donald Knuth's web system is an example of a notebook format where code is intertwined with the comments and with the essays with the, with the plain text aimed at human readers. On the slide, you can see the final list of software that I used uh, to solve the problem set. And surprisingly, it has not made changed too much from an like 
an imaginary student who would, would have been solving the problem set in the 1980s when the book was first published. Yes, six and plant GML did not exist at the time, uh, but uh, there were substitutes that were very similar in the user experience. And the basic principle was that the coursework solution artifact should be purely text-based. Text is the most portable format, most frequently used, and most time resistant. So I did not have an, a lot of experience working with scheme, tech, or UML, uh, even though I, I've, I had been a professional MATLAB developer, developer for quite some time already, and I even ha possessed a PhD in computer science. But in fact, this I can say this did not really help me too much in doing the problem set of SICP. Uh, I still resemble the newbie at the beginning of the process, which I um, hope can be uh, make the report less biased than it could could have been. On this slide, you can see the example of the solution, uh, like literally as it was done in an org mode file. Uh, you can see that there, is, there are certain blocks uh, with a special markup in which uh, the, the blocks are plain text, but you can write uh, scheme code between the, the lines and make uh, Emacs evaluate the code and produce a result. So all of the reports, all of the coursework is solved in this way. So every every problem has a corresponding uh, code block. And on the same slide, you can see that uh, problems that are finished are marked as done, and org mode allows to um, automatically sum up the amount of uh, done exercises and compare them to the total number of exercises. So this gives the status of the project as it goes on and uh, increases the motivation, basically. It's nice to know how much, how much is left and how much time is going on and how much progress you have done. Uh, the timestamps will be reused later for the analysis stage. On this slide, you can see the uh, example of a um, drawing. And SICP does require the student to perform several drawings to illustrate certain concepts of the, uh, of the underlying problem domain. And wherever the uh, pr problems did not admit a standards-based representation, uh, I, uh, I had to use ticks to, to perform the, the, the figures. And by when I'm saying standard-based, I basically mean UML. I know that people did not really like UML in general, um, but in fact, this is the only widely accepted uh, drawing standard in the industry, uh, widely used. And wherever the drawing problems of SICP admitted a standard-based representation, as you can see on the slide, for example, I tried to use this representation. Wherever a presentation with a standard language was not possible, I had to resort to the uh, to the tick uh, pictures, which were proved to be enough for most of my purposes. And the biggest problem was drawing debugger interfaces, that blocks and pointer diagrams and um, environment diagrams. I had to do that in ticks. So org mode allows measuring the time you spend on solving exercises, and these measurements uh, constitute a huge part of the report and the data uh, that I attach to it. Seeing a uh, problem set in the shape of a tree is very rewarding. You can uh, feel that you have all of the uh, map of the problem in front of your eyes, and it increases motivation when you can see that the problems are solved one by one, and you can track how much time you're spending on solving exercises. This is a very nice feeling that en encourages you to work more. Uh, uh, Students who attend regular classes in the university can generally ask for help of their teachers and teaching assistants, but self-learners are usually lacking this opportunity. And um, in fact, the same tricks that self-learners can use can also be used by the students who are not finding you know, a common tongue with their teachers. And anyway, after, after we graduate, we all become self-learners, so we have to find a way to look for help. And the main, uh, the main conclusion that I make from this process, from the solution, is that the Internet Relay Chat is still a viable source of information, even though it may seem obsolete, but there are uh, excellent uh, specialists on this network. And anyway, wherever you can find the help, use that medium. It's not the medium who, which defines the, the, the quality of support, but the people who, who, who use it. Uh, so now I'm turning the, to, the to the data that I've collected. On this slide, you can see the uh, two kinds of data that org mode allowed me to collect. 
on the first figure you can see the uh, study session the beginning timestamp the end timestamp and the duration and on the second figure you can see uh, when the problems were uh, closed or like deemed to be finished by me but in a university uh, a responsible person like a teacher could be uh, considering the problems done or not done uh, on the on this slide you can see the Emacs Lisp code or a fragment of the Emacs Lisp code that I used to analyze this this data and the all of the raw data essentially are attached to the org mode file that where in which this report has been created and it's done in a reproducible research style so it's possible to rerun the Emacs Lisp code to obtain the the same the same and the same results the same data uh, and the the code produces the the table that looks like the table on the right on this slide. I want to stress the use of the keyword CL labels and the sequence concatenate on the on the left of the slide because they basic basically allowed me to reuse the same uh, lexical scope in Emacs Lisp that I'm used I was used to using in Scheme. And essentially, my Emacs Lisp code is very very similar to the to the to the SICP code, to the style that SICP encourages. Um, on this slide, you can see the uh, aggregated statistics of the data collected during the execution of the problem set. On the top left uh, figure, you can see the amount of uh, days spent per problem. Uh, that is how many days the problem was residing in the student's me uh, memory from the beginning to the end. On the top right uh, figure, you can see the amount of time in the raw minutes of high concentration spent on each problem. On the bottom left slide, on the bottom left figure, you can see the uh, something in between the amount of sessions that were spent on the problem study sessions. So the top left uh, figure more 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 illustrates the tiredness of the student than the actual difficulty of the problem. Although these um, th these things depend. And on the top right, the raw s minutes spent per problem are probably more indicative of the difficulty of the problem itself. Uh, on this slide, you can see the aggregated statistics uh, co obtained with the help of the Emacs Lisp. And on the right, you can see the 10 hardest problems of the problem set. And I have to say that in general, the hardest and the, lo the longest, uh, the most time demanding problems are those that require a certain layer of um, portability that connects the scheme code that's so um, beautifully presented in the book with the actual surrounding uh, computation environment. So the problems either require to write this uh, compatibility layer, which was not provided in the book, or assemble a working system from the pieces of the code scattered all over the book, and that also required a lot of like architectural work and quite a lot of time. The problem 51 and 52 even required learning the whole new low-level language, which in my case uh, happened to be GNU Fortran. And in fact, I even had to uh, find a few bugs in GNU Fortran and fix them. I mean, other people fixed them for me, but I reported them. Uh, what is astonishing is the difference between the easiest problem and the hardest problem. The hardest problem required 94 hours. That's more than 10% of all the time consumption which is 729 hours a lot a lot of time by itself and on the previous slide on the bottom right uh, figure you can see the distribution of difficulty printed on a logarithmic scale and uh, in my experience it fits the uh, log normal distribution which is not by itself meaning a lot but it indicates the uh, the problem set is by no means even in difficulty and again, the hardest problem requires much more time than the easiest one. Uh, the full data is provided in the in the report file. You are free to to, to consult it. Uh, so, as a byproduct of the work, and because I had to write the portability layer and and contact the experts uh, to like recover some some almost lost knowledge, I, uh, the work had quite a lot of byproducts. Several bugs were fixed in the GNU Fortran. Several bugs were fixed in the scheme implementation that I was using, and I chose Chibi Scheme because it's um, it is probably the the most accurate implementation of the li latest version of the scheme standard, R7 or RS uh, large. It's not yet released, but it's the closest approximation. 
uh, again, in order to make uh, it possible to pass the SICP course and solve the SICP uh, problem set portably, I actually had to write two schema requests for implementation. One is already submitted, the other one is in development. And I hope this can be uh, considered a comp contribution of me to the, to the Scheme Society. Um, so uh, in my, in my, I hope that this uh, report can be reused uh, in the future by the teachers and by the learners. Teachers could see it as a model for a good feedback suite on their course. I hope it should be good. The students can use it as an example of what a good coursework should be looking like and as a motivational piece. Because really, 700 hours is a lot of time. And now I'm not just scaring the students saying, you know, you have to study because it requires a lot of work. But I can prove it with the real data collected uh, on, the, on the real life. And the core designers can optimize their, their uh, problem sets based on the difficulty, how much time a student is expected to spend on a particular problem set in, this in semester. Uh, you know, you can you can you can just have a look at the real real numbers, real figures, and the potential future developments are more or less obvious. Uh, this report is, after all, just a single data point in the difficulty space. Of course, we need more difficulty uh, difficulty assessments for the for this course and for the other courses too, um, and. Uh, more data points would reinforce this, uh, the, the estimate that I made my in, in this report. And you know the, the amount of courses is huge, and good feedback is invaluable to any people for doing anything, and to the professors as well. Uh, in principle, some service could be, could be provided to, to for, for the students to share their experience of solving their problem sets. Uh, so the more data we have in the world of big data, the better. Uh, I think behavioral analysis would be also useful. It would be interesting to find the most productive hours for a person and the less productive hours. I used to solve this problem set on the weekends and after the end of the working day, well, because I'm fully employed, full-time employed. And for the students, this distribution would probably be different. Uh, for myself, again, I can say this was a huge work. I do not uh, regret doing it, but it was way, way more than I expected. It required a full year of work. Uh, the, the 700 hours more is uh, three months of working full time nine to five. It's unlikely that you know students can really dedicate that much time uh, to university studies, although I'm not an expert on that. Um, fitting a SICP in two semesters fits, seems more likely and but even so, it would require a lot of work. On the other hand, I didn't, didn't find any extra topics that I would uh, identify as useless in the course. Even, even I can even say that there are certain areas that are lacking exercises, such as garbage collection and, and type theory. Uh, I had to f write quite a lot of portability code, but hopefully, maybe if the SR5s uh, go well, this will be less of a problem after after more more in implement schema, scheme implementation starts to support them. Well, software is still buggy and probably will stay buggy when other people will be solving the problem set. And uh, yeah, it's life is life. Uh, so yeah, do a, a, as much as thi as many things can be done with the computer assisted way, the better. Uh, we collect the data and we learn on this data. Well, I have to say thank you to all the people who assisted me in doing this uh, this project. First of all, people who are behind the scheme standards, people who are behind the scheme implementation, people who uh, implement the Emacs editor, thank you very much. People who developed the operating system I'm, I'm using that uh, let the bug fixes for GNU Fortran propagate into the main tree very fast. Thank you very much. And all the people who helped me with uh, solving problems on the Freenode channel on IRC. Thank you very much. If you're interested in what I've been doing, you're free to contact me through all the means on the left on the slide. And if you if you like this, you're free to don donate me because this work was not funded by any by any public source. So, you know, thank you very much who who does this. Okay. Anyway, this was a pleasure speaking to you. Thank you.
Okay, thank you, Vladimir, for your presentation. So, yeah, and congratulations for solving all the <laughs> the CICP uh, exercises. So, yeah, we have we we have a, a, like ten minutes for for questions. So, yeah, do we have any question for for Vladimir? Hello. Uh, are the SICP exercises marked in any way to say, here's one that's more of an open research problem, and here's the more basic questions that we'd expect you to do for homework? Um, sorry, what do you mean? Like mar marked by me or by the authors? By the authors. I know some textbooks uh, are very careful to say, not, here's a difficulty. Not, not really. I mean, I mean, the the, the, I mean, the problems that are not possible to solve are usually accompanied by the question, can you solve this exercise, which usually means implies no. So there are a couple of super tricky exercises, which, which I think are like not really solved so far at all. Like in particular, there is for 417, for, for, for something, for 49, which, which basically requires to solve a, um, uh, what's it called? The, the Navi, not the Navier stocks, like the, the, the probability uh, distribution propagation on a graph. And I think it's still an open problem. And even if it's, it can be solved, it would be like computationally super ex expensive. Uh, so no, and, and this problem has like the comment that can you solve this problem? And I just wrote no, because it's, you know, okay. unlikely to be ever solved. Uh, and most of the others, I think, um, I mean, you kind of can get it from, from the, the way the problems are worded, which ones are like expected to be uh, time consuming, uh, which are not. But, I mean, and obviously, like writing a scheme interpreter in a low level language is, is you know expected to be hard but but I mean, usually the hardest ones again are the ones in the beginning of each chapter which require you to collect all the pieces of code and put them into one place okay well because I'm thinking I hope I'll, I hope, that I I hope like, that like, answered your question yeah, yeah, but no no there is like no 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 mark on a problem that would say you know this is hard or this is easy. Because the textbooks I enjoy best usually have lots of exercises, and I would never expect a student or even you know myself to go through every one, but I like to see the variety. Uh, well, I mean, I mean, look, if you look at the math textbooks, that's usually like many of the many copies of the same. So, like in a, I don't know, in like a linear algebra yeah. textbook, you don't have to solve all the equations. But this ICP is not like this. This ICP problem set is more of like implement this model, implement that model, like build, build another model on top of this model, build yet another model on top of the second model. So I cannot say, you know, as I said in the, in the presentation, it's, you cannot really draw problems there from, from the set while maintaining the, the amount of information. So it's, there is very little redundancy in the course. So there are like Thanks. two or three that are like obviously open-ended but that's as much as it is. Okay, any other question for Vladimir? So if I have like five minutes, I can, I can uh, also, oh, uh, okay. I can sh show the, the actual, the file with the solution, if that's appropriate. So I actually have a quick question for you, Vladimir. So sure. are you not planning to, to do the same study for SICP JavaScript now that you oh, oh, saw the keynote nice this morning? <laughs> no, I don't think so. But, but maybe, maybe, maybe uh, eventually I'll do it for some other course because I mean, it's free. Like, like doing the, the profiling is costs nothing. If you're solving exercises and you just, start measuring time when you're solving them and you turn off the timer when you're finished, that that's cost you nothing. Like Emacs does that automatically. So I don't see any reason not to do it. And in fact, 
In fact, what I find kind of amusing is that um, uh, when I was solving, like doing a course on partial differential equations, it, it cost me roughly the same amount of time. So if, if anybody is looking at the screen, so this is the, the way actual file looks like. So if they, I hope the video makes any sense. So the, the, the partial differential equations also required roughly speaking 300 hours per semester, even though like the, the university get them, gave a much lower uh, um, time consumption estimate. So I'm, I'm suspecting that basically any kind of university level uh, course should be requiring around 300 hours. That's, that's a super, a super heuristic and super unjustified, but I just feel that that's probably not far from being true. Yeah. So this is basically what the, way, the way it looks like in the, in the final. Level. So the final file is like around 70, thousand lines and um, um, like the, the mm. did it especially want to be one org file rather than broken apart by chapters that's just a much larger org file than I've ever managed to build um, well I mean one file means you're not gonna lose parts of it you if you lose it you lose all of it yes so, uh, like it depends but i generally find uh, files like scattered files less convenient than than uh just one thing like if it's like one thing and you can compile the the book from it and you can send it as an executable file and you can do like uh whatever you want with it i i, I to be honest find it more more convenient um all right hey this so, is Coming from somebody who's written a lot more larger org file than I have, I'll take the advice. So, I mean, I, if you can see what's happening on the screen, so this is basically the way the uh, the problems that are called like assemble the the interpreter from the pieces of code. So, the each like double angular bracket thing is and basically an include of another block. So, this this file, this is a scheme interpreter. Can, that's built out of out of like org mode blocks, and this has like around thirty or forty blocks included. And that is, yeah, this is a compiler of like the compiler from scheme to to, to, to scheme, I think. And you can see the output as well. It's not super efficient. Like the 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 org mode support for scheme is not extremely good. I think it like deserves some improvement. But it's good enough to to sort to solve the, the the SICP. There are quite there are like a few nasty tricks that had to be used for 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 fitting everything into like one. I mean I mean like it's like depends on the strength of your machine. Sometimes it's worth turning off the syntax highlighting because it slows down Emacs quite a lot. Um, and I mean and. I think it's the the kind of first attempt to have the pictures drawn in the text as well. So it's like a self, fully self-contained, as much self-contained as it can, as I, as I managed to make it, but it's quite self-contained. Sorry, I need to be interrupting. Any other questions? 